brand new paper. But you ain't wearing that. Let me some paper, man. <laughs> paper, she'll live forever. That's what we've been up to, man. We was working on an album. Makeup line. Yeah. Yeah. Makeup line. Makeup line. <laughs> What you gonna call? Coming out with a line of socks for stepdaddies that stay white all year round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he for real or he I'm for this. Oh, he I'm, did. You know how socks get <laughs> saggy after a while? Yeah. Uh uh. I got I got a couple put that dude on. Yeah, yeah, show. yeah. I've been talking to some people. Got some socks that don't sag. Need to come up with some socks. I, I with come some, up with ideas. With some yeah, grip I'm on the bottom. Shit, why not? Shit. Huh? Yeah. Make some socks with some grip on the bottom. So yeah, that yeah, sock yeah. won't slide off. Bringing that all the way back. Yeah, so Yo, I'm Oregon, the idea sure. man. I just I take the chances with this shit. Shit, why not, man? I'll be having to come up with all kind of things, man. I'm trying to get into the coffee mug business for some reason. Yeah. I feel like it can be loop nigga lie. The coffee mug or coffee business? Coffee mugs. Okay. Everybody's in the coffee business. Yeah. With, with Who's name? in the coffee mug business? Right. Like with she, sands on them. She a bug girl, love her some coffee mugs. She order some new coffee mugs every day. Yeah, having and a new coffee black bag is like having a new bag for her. Put black people's sayings on them. Black yeah. woman, like a whole line of just angry black women's sayings on them. She get a new coffee mug, she acting bad. Not today. <laughs> you feel me? Right. All that type of shit. We spitball. Yeah. Brain roll. You know, just doing what I got to do to take these chances. Right. What's the goal? The goal is in seven generations of my legacy, my picture's still up. Mm -hmm. I want everybody that comes from my legacy to know what I look like and what I did. It's basically letting the world know you exist. Thank you. Legacy. You was here. You was here. It ain't a, it's not a dollar yeah. amount, it's legacy. A thousand percent. How many lives can we impact mm -hmm. between here and there? A thousand percent. How many ghetto children can we get out of the ghetto? Mm -hmm. You feel me? How many niggas can we start, can we get to start back exercising their true natural gifts? Mm. How many minds can we unlock? Mm. You feel me? How many people can we free mm -hmm. in our time here? That's the journey, that's the goal. Like, like, we, like you about to go in a boot or something. Yeah, you know, just shit. to leave shit better <laughs> right. than it was when we came. Yeah. Yeah, change the whole, like I want, this the black trajectory, I want this shit to kind of like, I told, I told my grandmother recently, I'm like, I'm like, I think the goal while we're here is to infect as many people with a piece of us as much as possible, you know what I mean? The good pieces. Yeah, the good pieces, you know, like, so like leaving something behind. If you can help somebody teach them something that can help them and, and better them, why not? You know, right. so um, I think that's the whole, the whole goal, man. Like it should be the goal to, you know, just help as many people um, along your way. Exactly. In a, in a way where it's like, like where they can help somebody and right. then you start that domino effect. Cause all you need is one. Right. It reminds me of that line that battle rapper said. One of my niggas bring two get two niggas. <laughs> two niggas get three. Yeah. Three niggas bring four niggas and five niggas come back and get me. That's the <laughs> shit we own. <all>. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You ready to get this shit jumped off? How you feeling today? I don't usually man. just start immediately. I gotta set the tone. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, I think with, like, how you started, like you started, you yeah. warmed me up right quick. You gotta break the ice. <laughs> yeah, you broke the ice, And then sure. you gotta let, let the pimping marinate yeah. first, because that changed the whole atmosphere. I couldn't help but talk and just do this. Yeah, that's that exactly vibing. what we're going for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that shit good for your soul. Clax no, he went to he went to school for music and yeah. shit. So. He ain't one of them niggas that just be pushing buttons. He be having this shit in there like I need 88 beats per minute type shit. Yeah. He know what a half note and a quarter note is. Yeah. Sharps and flats, treble clefs, all types of shit. Yeah. The beats move. <laughs> you feel me? Mm-hmm. Close that door for me. Don't be afraid. I ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, Nigel. <laughs> you ain't gotta keep doing that shit. You see, he brought multiple pimping. Yeah. But this would be the perfect time for me to say this. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> right. You know, 
Turn me down just a pimp, just a tad pimp. Yeah, let that sit just like that, man. Now, you know, we don't bring nobody but legends through here, Money Bag. Mm. I got my man Money Bag Mafia in here yeah. with me today. Bro. You know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, we was, we was out one night drinking and he started crying and he was like, I want to do something too. <laughs> I was like, what is it that you want to do? He's like, man, I can be on that motherfucker with y'all. <laughs> so, like, I ain't even know he expressed that desire to do this type of shit. Right. I had to wait to like, catch you alone. Man. I know, yeah. but he been showing up Who once a week. Yeah. I don't know if you for real or you I'm dead paid. the I'm fuck dead. Dead. Right, right. I, No, that's what's up, though. Crazy that's what's up. Nigga. That's what's up. Bro, this one impact, that impact. Get on here. I cried. Yo. And you here. I cried yeah, about. He put, he put his best foot forward. Yeah. I was like, shit, man. Hey, if you want to fuck with it, man. That's fire. I'll show you the game. I that's ain't shit. Up. You just got to keep doing what you do and express yourself creatively. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's what but man, on. we had to get you on here though. Yeah. You I appreciate a cold that. dude at what you do. I appreciate that. And it, it ain't you. a lot of dudes that do what you do that's in your lane. And then it's like, we got the platform to bring people like you on here so the world can know yeah. who they need to be in touch with when they pulling up in your city. Yeah. Cause you got, you got multiple spots at this point. Multiple business ventures. Yep. And you taking off. And I wanted to bring you on the platform and introduce you to the real 85 percenters. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Mr. Larry Morrow. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank y'all. Now, it's not my job to tell them everything, mm -hmm. but I did send my research team. We got some pictures of you from 1991. <laughs> uh, I'm like, man, I know, I, man, I, I know, I know. We found your old MySpace page. Man. We, we know who was like in your top eight. I like a little on that picture. Yeah, we know who was in your top eight. You know. <laughs> but Research man, team cold. I want you to pick you one of these cameras in and give them a brief introduction of, of who you are and oh, what you do. Okay, so um, I'm Larry Morrow, um, 32 years old, from New Orleans. Uh, I started off in the event uh, producing, I um, mean, event production industry. Started producing events at the early age of 20 um, and just kind of got my foot in the door with just l like connecting, building, networking with people uh, that allowed me to, you know, grow my brand. And uh, at an early age, I was really, I was more so focusing on like the art of relationships, yeah. like, you know, building relationships. Because being from New Orleans, you know, I'm not from a city where there's a lot of, you know, you're not in Atlanta, Houston, LA, New York, where you have all these people who hosted these events living there, you know? Right. So I always had to pay a higher dollar amount because I had to bring people into town. And um, at an early age, I learned the value in relationships and that, you know, it wasn't money that could change things. It was those relationships that can help you make money. Who you know and who you know, yeah. who you know you back. Yep, yep. So at the age of 20, man, I did my first event where I booked somebody. First person I booked was Drea. You read Michelle? And so she came to New Orleans, had a great time. And, um, you know, long story short, at the end of the day, she was like, yo, out of every place we went to, you being 20 years old, you took care of us more than anybody. And I'm like, oh, that's dope. Like, I was just being myself, just showing that Southern hospitality. So um, I went to LA, her, her manager, her friends, introduced me to a lot of people um, that I'm still cool with to today. Yeah. And that just really woke me up and showed me like, damn, I was able to accomplish this by just being me. Yeah. I didn't have to be anybody else but myself. So uh, from that moment forward, I really started to put my best foot forward. And I started to book, book so many people, bring people into town and not make it about the money. You yeah. know, I would lose money to make money, you know, like, so I would like do parties and would lose money. And um, I was okay with it. And I became just immune to just the, the risk factor from my early on, like shooting dice and stuff as a kid. But when I started producing these events, it just was like, you know, I just had a, a bigger vision in mind. So right. I turned, you know, 23, opened up restaurants, do different things, and um, I'm constantly producing events. So um, in 2016, I booked, fast forward a little bit, I booked Drake. I booked Puff Drake and, and Lil Wayne, like back to back. Hold up, that's too much of a fast Because <laughs> you don't go from just booking Drea to fucking booking Drake in well, 2016. So I was man. 20. We know what them no, numbers no, look, 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 I was 20, right? So I fast Hold up, I got to tell bit. you this. Those pictures that we got of you from yeah. 1991, the baby pictures. <laughs> yeah, I had got in touch with your auntie on Facebook. <laughs> and I was just letting you know. 
that we can add to. So I skipped over a little bit, but like a lot bit. It went, all right, so you want to go through it all? Yeah. So hold so, up. So how you get your start? I know. Right. But I, I'm I'm looking at my notes. How so, did you start this? So trip? like when I when I produced that first event, when I produced that first event, how did you event, even get to that point? What was so, you doing well, prior to when that? Wasn't, first well, the first event I ho- uh, I produced that I had someone host. Okay. But the first event that I produced where I made good money, I was 20 years old, no, no, 19, going on 20. I did my 20th birthday party and I made like $11,000. So I'm 20, I'm in college, and I'm like, damn, I could make money doing this. And I'm like, you know, I got a little taste of it. So that's like where, I, that's, that's the moment I decided to really start pursuing these events and drop out of college and just focus on what I was building at the moment. And so, you know, Fast forward, book drill, first person I had host, ended up booking a lot of people. It was crazy because I booked DC right shortly after that, like when I was like 22, 23, like back in 2013, 2014. And that was like, you know, one of the first few people I bought to New Orleans as well when I really started booking people um, and just building these relationships. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll tell you another story. Like when I when I was 20, right after I booked Dre, I booked King Los. Y'all familiar with King Los? Yeah, I know King Los. My brother, you know what I mean? And when I booked King Los, he came to New Orleans had a great time, I showed him a good time, and he was like, yo, one day he called me, he was like, yo, I'm going to LA, Puff just moved me to LA. Uh, he got a, a private party at his crib. Now I'm 21 years old at the time, and I go to LA, and I pull up to this big ass house in Beverly Hills, and you know, I'm at the top, I feel like I'm at the top of the world when I'm at Puff crib. And that situation, I tell people like, LA, that one experience going to LA changed my life. Why, because it's like being from New Orleans where well, I'm in the swamps, you know what I mean? Everything's flat to going to LA. I'm on the hills and I'm in this crib and I see everybody I see on TV, this and that. And just when I got in the backyard and I looked, like, at LA. Just, just, just looked at LA, I did that same shit. it changed my life. Yeah. Why? Because I didn't even know that shit existed. Mm-hmm. You know, like you see LA on movies, but you don't, you don't realize that this is real, yeah. you know? So that one situation, you know, shout out to King Los, man, that really changed my perspective on a lot of things. and allow me to want to come back home and and do what I do and just take it to another level because at the same time I was you know doing these events I was being exposed to new experiences and getting new information that changed my life and what what, would allow me to just really just just come back and and have that motivation that drive to know like look all right I'm headed toward that that direction now you know so over the years I just constantly kept booking people I um, uh, just kept booking, just kept booking in 2013. Opened up my first, so when I turned 22, I opened up my first restaurant. It was called uh, Larry's Poor Boys and Wings. And uh, it was on Canal Street. My mom, she had an idea. She was like, yo, I think we should have, um, I think we should open up this spot right here. Decided to name it after me. Uh, so was your was mom like your investor? Or was no, no, you I, no, no, I was the investor. I was okay. the investor. So. Um, my mom flipped that that lemon rack about <laughs> eight times. Man. So so my mom she had an idea and um, you know at an early age I played a you know I had to step up a little early so uh, that kind of was like she was my motivation to really she was one of the things that helped really just you know push me to that next level because at the time she was going through a lot yeah. and that was like the thing that was really uh, pushing me and driving me at that time so. Uh, she was like, yo, I have this opportunity. Let's open up this restaurant. I did it. Six months later, closed down. Yeah. Let and, me ask you this. You being, you coming into this, this whole world of, you know, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and, and independence, like, who, who did you follow growing up? Or, like, who, did, who was your example that you saw that made you say, I'll take the independent route or I'll do it myself? So I would say, uh, I think at an early age, my grandmother was always an entrepreneur. My mom. Um, and I, I seen their their successes. I seen their you know life get you know rocky for them. So uh, I would say watching them at an early age when I was five years old. I remember watching. I mean, I being in the car with my grandmother, five a.m. going uptown in New Orleans to one of her grocery stores, right? So I think you know when when you see those things early on, you kind of you, you, it's being instilled in you, and you don't you even know like them, yeah. yeah. But I think outside of that, you know, my father and I being there, I, I wouldn't say I had like a a male figure that I looked up to that really inspired me. It was more so my mom. But um, in the industry, like, you know, Puff was somebody who, in the industry, I really looked up to. Watched, watched his moves, and it was somebody who I really, like, like, yo, like, like I loved everything that he was doing, you know, from music to entrepreneurship to everything. So 
that was one of you know, the, the, the big inspirations I had at the moment as well. Yeah. That's hard, man. And then you get to work with them and shit too. Yeah. So crazy. Cause, Cause it's just on this show, like like we get to meet a lot of people that you know, like yeah. that we followed and inspired us. So I always want to ask other people who inspired them just to go out there and get it. And it's crazy because the first time I booked them, I called my moms. I'm like, Ma, guess who I just who I'm about to book? I, uh, she was like, Who? I said, Diddy. She's like, Oh my gosh, Larry! She started freaking out. She's like, Does he know he's your idol? <laughs> I'm like, Ma, I ain't even talked to the man. I'm like, he's not even booked. And she was trying to go tell all her friends, and I'm 25 years old. Yeah. So, you know, she was excited, but, you know, that's how much of an impact, you know, she knew he had on me as a teenager, just being able to see his moves and him just thriving in entertainment and entrepreneurship, because in a sense, you know, I'm from producing events to just being an entrepreneur to, you know, from real estate to hospitality to, you know, I'm an author, you know, um, I develop homes, you know, so. Who plugged you in with them to, to be able to, like, you know, you have to do this shit for a minute before you just decide, I'm about to book Puff. King right. Lowe's, man. So King Lowe's plugged me, well, like, you know, Puff didn't know who I was when I was Not just trail, to meet the nigga, to book him now. This, well, this is big shit. Honestly, I don't remember who connected me with James, who was his manager at the time, been with him for a long time. Um, can't remember who, who, who connected me with him, but. Um, for a long time, like I got like OGs like Kenny Burns and Ken and Jasper. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. They connect me with a lot of people. You know, yeah. like they like if, I, if if it's somebody I don't have access to, or I I, I didn't know at the time, they would couldn't make the connection for me. But I was using a booking agent. At, uh, like I had to pay them fees. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? So, but now it's like you know I don't have to pay those fees. You know, some people I call the and book, or you know I hit them up and like yo look I, I need to book you for this date. So it was more so building that black book up and and just building those contacts up after I would book a, you know, book somebody through an agent. And, you know, nine, nine times out of ten, when they came to New Orleans and I showed them that Southern hospitality, it was like... It was on the love. Yeah, yeah, it was like, yo, like, you know. I had a lot of situations like that where people would come down and be like, man, like, you know, I, I, I help people create those memories, those moments to where they won't forget it, yeah. you know? So when I, when I show up in New York or L.A., you know, they'll reciprocate that same energy that I put out, you know what I mean? So... That kind of, you know, that that whole regimen just was something that really helped me become who I've become over the years. Yeah, I see you got your watch back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that's but I said, like, yeah, you sold a rolling? <laughs> yeah, but see, that's what it, like, yeah, it, is, it says in, in the sad notes that that's how you kind of jumped off your entrepreneur endeavors with selling your watch. So that's, so I sold a Rolex. I had a bust down Rolex at the time. Um, I sold it for 39000 I paid forty for it. How old you when we did that? And so I got what I got what I paid. <laughs> How old you when we did that? 25. So I, I bought yeah, my first piece of property at 25 friend. years old. Yeah. Right? And one of my homies <laughs> bought it from me. I ain't gonna say his name, but he gave me what I damn near what I paid for it. Puff daddy. <laughs> no, no. So one of my homies <laughs> bought it from me and I bought this um this house for thirty nine thousand. Um it was one of my first investment properties. Uh, one of my mentors, Sadat Spencer, he um he saw I was passionate about getting into the real estate game. He had a house. I wasn't bankable at the time. So he was like, yo, look, you can buy this house. I was gonna buy it. If you wanna buy it, you can buy it. Uh, I couldn't go to the bank and get a loan just cause I had my taxes and all my business in order. Yeah. Knew nothing about it. So um, I, uh, I ended up paying cash for the house and I used the cash that I was making. I was making fast money in the industry, so the promotion industry. So I would use that fast cash and I was trying to find a place to park it. Cause you know, it's like, that money will come fast and it'll go fast. So yeah, I was thinking of like how to shit, hold on to it. A bunch of outfits. Yeah, so 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 I was <laughs> investing it in um that one house and it just it just taught me a lot. Cause when I saw I couldn't go to the bank and get financing, it made me get my shit together because I had to start thinking about my taxes, paying taxes. At 25, I wasn't thinking about no taxes. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, you know, and, and Especially so. Especially in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah I, I, I wasn't doing business the, the way it was supposed to be done because I, I I didn't have the information. All right. So when I saw that, it's like. I, had, I just had to figure out some things and, you know, ask a lot of questions to see how I can position myself to be bankable and not have to sp drop all my money on a house. Yeah. You know, um, where you get the information from? Man, I asked a lot of questions. So Sadat Spencer, one of my close friends, brothers, JC, um, uh, Sidney Torres, uh, a lot of close homies who, who, who who's doing that in the industry, you know, so it's not just people who um, I just see and be like, oh, how, how do I do this? You know, it's people that's actually in the industry. Um, real estate, you know, who who know about, you know, these different things as far as when it comes to getting um, taxes, investing and different things like that. So I'm one of those people who ask a lot of questions 
Uh, I want to know. I want to know how, who, what, when, where. Um, and I What's, think we got to go through. The, I ain't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Give me some of your lavish memories from your events. Lavish memories. Like, dude, like, I can't believe this. This shit was crazy. I got a video. Like when people call the next day and be like, Larry, boy, you a fool for last night. So, so no, no, listen, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, I had some, cause I done booked everybody. Right. Like literally from Drake's to Chris Brown's to Mary J. Blige's to Floyd Mayweather's to, you know, shit. I done had Patti LaBelle call my phone and be like, Larry, your mama macaroni better than mine. You know, so I didn't experience a lot over the years, and I, but I would say one of the moments that, like, you know, uh, that, that really, like, made me realize, like, damn. It was when I was chilling in the section. I had Drake and DJ, DJ Esco hosting. And uh, DJ Esco, he decided to go get on stage. And, you know, with Drake, you never know what you're going to get, you know, because, you know, I paid him to host. I didn't pay him to perform. He see DJ Esco get up there. A few minutes, you see Jake, Drake just looking around, and then he go hop on that stage, and it's like, Everybody go crazy. And at that moment, I'm like, they got this video of me. I'm like, oh, shit. And that he gonna charge me for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at that moment, I'm like, damn. Like, you know, because, you know, it's just one of those situations where I'm, I'm a big fan of Drake's too, you know what I mean? So between that and Puff, it just kind of like, damn, like I'm working with some of the people that, um, that, I, that, that, that I admire, like in the music industry or entertainment, whatever, uh, entrepreneurship. So it's just dope just to be able to see how Things has has like you know transpired. Larry over got years. a girl. You see that? Larry ain't told us shit that happened at the party. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, man. You know, just working with people you admire. Man, yeah. we know. We know. <laughs> what a hoes at, that, Larry? I don't know. What, what got live in there, Larry? <laughs> shit. He ain't told us shit. <laughs> man, I'm real laid back, but it's like like one. You thing. laid back, but you know no, when no, that shit no, jumps. No, but listen. When I'm, they calling your phone, Larry, come to the door. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, but look, like real talk, I would say for most people in my position in my age at that time, it's like a lot of things that I experienced. It wasn't like you couldn't really like if I was excited, I made sure like at that moment. But I wouldn't let like I wasn't, you know, like I wasn't just what, what, what I would say, ODing on, on, on everything. You, you, green, you wouldn't have too no, much fun. No, no, I, I was having fun at the earliest parts of my life, but it wasn't about that. It was more so about like making shit happen. Larry, I've been to your club. I was in your club all <laughs> well, fucking it, yeah. night <laughs> hanging out with people that I didn't even, I ain't never think we would get this many people in here. Yeah, I was that Man, we're in Larry that. Club, man. Nas and motherfucking Anthony Mackie and it's a whole bunch, and they singing motherfucking Fantasia and shit. That was a private joint I had together for Essence, yeah. I yeah. remember that. And um, yeah, man, so, you know, I, I don't really like, I, I make sure I um, have balance. I think that's been part of the reason I've been able to grow. Cause I balance it, you know. I don't really, I don't really just. Um, I'm real disciplined, man. I'm habits, you know. I wake up early, work out. I go, I go to sleep late. I wake up early. Like nothing change about what I got going on. Like if I'm out having fun, it ain't no excuse for me to wake up late, you know. So I've been like that since early on. Like when I turned, like I went through the phase of like me waking up at 1 a.m. I mean 1 p.m. and you know the, the day damn near over. over. I, I done been through that slump drinking. But see, that's how you end up in the underworld. Right, 1,000%. Because anybody who ever been, like, had a day job or a day life, right. they know that it's a whole nother life that don't even start till it get dark. Right. right. That's the underworld shit. And, and real talk, that, that's the life I was living in. I ain't like it. So it's like, I think one of the biggest transitions for me was when I started to, when I started to fast. You know, I started to fast. I did my first fast. I was on the way to drop one of my, um, somebody real close to me off to prison. Uh, this was in 2016. Damn, you uh, can get dropped off in prison. I thought you had to ride with them. No, 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 no. I had to drop them off in Pensacola, so I had to drop them off at a camp. At a camp. Oh, I ain't know. No, no, you can get dropped off. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he, had to turn, <laughs> he, no, no, he had to turn himself in. So 2016, oh. August 15th, 2016, I had to drop him off, and our last meal was at Wendy's. Damn. So we had our That's last meal. Last time Wendy's was hidden like this, too. <laughs> so I, I ate Wendy's, and I'm like, man, I got to do something. I don't want to end up in this, like, I, I don't want to end up in, you know, ever had to experience this. A nigga dropped me off. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, man, I got to switch things up. And so I um, dropped them off. And uh, from that moment forward, I just gave up a lot. Like, I went on my first fast, stopped eating meat, stopped drinking, stopped um, uh, a bunch of different things, right? Eating and, pussy, all that. <laughs> nah, and I would say that was like that. I would say that's that pivotal moment, you know, for me because 
that one situation really like just just taught me how to discipline myself, how to really just lock in and just take shit to the next level. And that's right before I started booking Diddy, Drake, and everybody. Like when I locked in, everything just started to manifest. Yeah. Uh, like in 2016. So so, so um, that's really like you know that transition piece was like a big part of what you see today. Cause I have fun, but it's like I, I work harder than I than I have fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. You ever book somebody you ain't fuck with like that afterwards? Like, I ain't never booking that nigga ass again. Yeah, I can't remember who, but man, there's some people that you book. You, you know, know yeah. that, It's a good you motherfucking business, man, right? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 if no, you don't remember no. nobody, you remember who, who you, you ain't know. fucking and with. Who again. you ain't getting no more Nah, because too. look, when I bring people down, I have no expectation. I'm going to do my job. I mean, I'm going to show you a great time. I'm going to over exceed. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make you feel like, damn. Like, you know, so it's going to be hard to not fuck with me because I'm gonna roll that carpet out. Right. You feel me? So it's like. But if I roll this carpet out and you walk on this shit and get really, shit and mud all on, I'm not inviting you back to my fucking right, carpet. Right, but, but then it's the thing, right? I don't really, I'm not really emotion, that emotional like when it pertains to this because it's like, you know, you can't be emotional in this industry. I'm dealing with so many people, personalities, you know, a lot of dudes with egos outside the club, they pay $1,000 for a section, it's like they own it. You feel me? Yeah. So I've learned a lot over my early years to where it's like, you know, it allowed me not to be as emotional as most would be yeah. when you got to deal with a lot of things at the club. So, uh, and, and, and whenever I did deal with somebody and, and it didn't go right, it's like, I, I like to let shit happen organic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't really bother me. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, if, if I shoot 10 shots, I make nine, I miss one, it's all good. But I guarantee they had a great experience and they're going to remember that moment. All right. All right, so. so if you, all right, this is your, this is your dream party, who you want there? I'm talking about this. Party. Everybody, you got access to everybody you want in this motherfucker. My dream party. Hmm. Crazy Larry Throwdown. It's going down. Patty LaBelle did it. 85 South. 85 <laughs> South. We got that thousand dollar section acting like we own that My bitch. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> One and a half bottle. Don't nobody even drink. <laughs> man. Oh, that's a tough one, man, because I feel like I've done, I've done, you know. It's not really more people for me to many people for me to book. You had Kirk Franklin. I mean, but that's not a dream party for me. I'm gonna ask you. No, 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 no. Kirk Franklin, he don't <laughs> go to the club, but I'm telling you, he a cold you nigga, know, bro. Look, whenever they play his record in the club, they, you know, like at the end of the club, they start playing his record, and that shit go hard. <laughs> oh, especially when they throw that that bounce book yeah. under the. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, right now it's like, for me, it's bigger than the parties. It's bigger <laughs> than all that, man. I just been working on just building you know, um, just building outside of that, you know, yeah. doing that, but just building. So it's like, I feel like I've done, you know, if you had to ask me, I would say Puff, I would say Drake, I would say, uh, you know, everybody who I, who I. You said Mary J. Blige earlier, and everybody who know me know I love Mary J. Blige. Mary, I mean, yeah. I want to just go over her house. I mean, when Mary like coming to Orleans, Sunday, and she coming tomorrow. <laughs> man, just like in the kitchen playing cards while she cooking some spaghetti or something with the garlic bread. I just feel like the energy in her kitchen is just dope. Ain't no telling right. who will be over there. Like, I remember I was at uh I was at Puff Party like years back and um Mary saw me. I'm like, what's up, Mary? Like, Larry? I felt like I was somebody, bro. I'm like, man. Because it's like, you know, that's somebody who, of course, my mom love her, but like me and Mary over the years we've built and um when she come to New Orleans, she she always come tomorrow. She um mom, she loved moms, moms always cook for her, cook yeah. some special stuff when she down to filming and shit. So um yeah, Mary, man, she real cool. Did anybody from your hometown help you out? Like other big names, Wayne them and shit like that? Like when you was on your way up, like. When know. I was on my way up, I would say, the ones that really helped me out, I would say Musa, y'all know Musa, right? Yeah, Musa yeah, and Currency. Yeah. Early on in my, um, just when I started, when I got started, like, you know, Musa and Currency definitely played a role in like just, you know, I called Musa and anything I needed, Musa would help me out. He would connect me with different artists. Jet Life. Uh, yeah, Jet yeah. Life for sure, you know. Um, uh, I would say they um, just solid like that. Them one, like you know how it is. You meet a whole lot of people, but they, they thorough and they yeah, do not exactly for sure. what the fuck. Like they like say. currency, one of the only people that still live in New Orleans, you know. Yeah. And 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 you, and know, you would literally see this nigga just yeah, at the gas station. Yeah, yeah chilling, you know. Um, Drinking. Uh, I would say them. I would say you know Fee Banks, you know. Fee. Birdman he, ain't step in do nothing. Ain't nothing. I mean, there. honestly, me and Birdman, we just kind of you know Birdman who was at the restaurant the other day. But when it comes to the pioneers like that, like Birdman, Wayne, you know, they've been out of New Orleans for a while. Yeah, okay. And 
So when you're out in New Orleans, you can be disconnected in a sense, but be connected. But uh, just from running in the same circles, and right? Shit. And, and so he knew of me, but we never really connected. So uh, recently, he's been coming down to New Orleans a lot, and he's been coming to Morrow. So I posted a picture of him the other day. He'll come back to. Uh, I mean, he's been coming to. Uh, he went to Morrow's, went to Sun Chung, came back to Sun Chung because he loved the, the you didn't even tell him about coffee fried rice. Yet. Yeah, I'm, I, I get to that. See, man, you're too busy, man. I got to give a, Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> Changing your name, man. We ain't here with Hustlin' Ass Larry today. <laughs> <laughs> he got a million and one things going on. So, man, tell him about Sun Chung. So, uh, Sun Chung is a concept I opened up in May. Um, Sun Chung, I named after my grandmother. So, uh, my grandmother's Korean. She's from Korea. Um, That's how she Korean. She's Korean. Yeah, because yeah. they from Korea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now my grandmother, uh, so I named that the Sun Chung. And I like, I like to do things, create concepts that's just not like, it's legacy. Yeah. You know, like things that feel good. See? It's easy for me to get behind something and be passionate about it when it has some, it touch you in a certain way, you feel me? So when creating this this concept, Sun Chung, I wanted to create an Asian American spot. Uh, so you grew only up with your hip-hop. Yeah. Like, so yep, you I grew up my grandmother, yeah. You know the cuisine and the culture. Oh, man, I love that. Korean food, 1,000%. Never been, been in Korea, but I ain't gonna lie, my grandmother more black than she is Korean. <laughs> she really is. Like, she, like, See, like, that's some New Orleans shit. You could be black and have a Korean grandma. Talk, you tell her she Korean. You tell her she Korean. She's like, no, I'm black. <laughs> so, a little 411 Asian lady. But, like, she had all of the stores in the hoods, like, you know, across the street, Birdman, Lil Wayne, Soldier Slim, everybody used to come by her store. Right. Because it was right across the street from the Magnolia. So, at one point, like, you know, she had a lot of spots uptown, so people, you know, w were very familiar with her. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. So, so I created this concept after her, and um, Asian American concept with, you know, only classic hip hop music being played. Um, it's just something I just wanted to do different, you know, just, just offer different vibes. You know, I have the New Orleans cuisine, which is Morrow's. Cajun American Monday, which is one of my restaurants I opened up last year. Um, now I have the uh, Asian American, Sun Chung. I have uh, Morrow Steak opening up this year. No, I'm fucking with I that. Have, Tell um, me about that. Now it's going to be some next level shit. Yeah. I got a uh, Spicy Mango, which is a New Orleans Caribbean concept I'm opening on Frenchman and Frenchman and uh, Espinade. It's like it's historic street. I'm at the forefront of it. You got to right. see me before you go on the strip. You know what I mean? Right. So um, I got that opening up in a few months. Um, and, you know, I've been looking out here in Atlanta, been looking in Houston. So, you know, we're expanding, expanding the hospitality portfolio. Okay. Yeah. That's hard, Larry, because, I mean, Put like I said, been, in, here, been in your spot, bro. Oh. You really know how to lay a motherfucking spot out. Yeah. And your concepts is dope. You get a different crowd. There'll be some nice ladies in there, bitch. And one thing I really dug about at, at your spot, bro, your shit ain't dark. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Nigga, it's, it's lit up. He's not, see, everything in Atlanta like a club now. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what you used Starbucks to. Starbucks and they got a DJ. <laughs> Man. <laughs> when we tell, what happened during the pandemic, you know, it was making it hard, like you couldn't really operate as a club, but yeah. if you were a restaurant, had a restaurant license, you could operate as a club. So maybe that's where it come from, like the club store. You know what I mean? So. Club's the run. Yeah, restaurant with a club mix, yeah. Hey, man. That about like STK. You might need to trademark that, that Oh, no, nah, that's not nothing new. It's not nothing new. You Google a club surround, stuff will pop up. Nigga, I'm SGK. But it ain't a spot called a club surround. Right. Right. No, at one point during the pandemic, like, you know, that's like a name I put in my notes and I was thinking about it, but, you know, a club surround don't really, it don't really do it for me, you know? All right, Larry. It'll <laughs> yeah, do it for someone. Someone is watching this Rest and they're going to come out. I don't Rest know the club. Try to help. <laughs> <laughs> yep, You've been so. getting into the real estate game even more, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, well, well I actually slowed up on buying real estate. Um, because I was focusing more like, at one point I was doing 10 different things and I realized that I can't get to where I'm going by spreading myself thin. So I, I was literally trying to do any and everything, anything that could make money, that's what I was doing. And I realized that, you know, that's, that wasn't the, the recipe yeah. for success, you know? So I really took a step back and I, I put my eyes on just growing my hospitality portfolio. And I went from, you know, um, in 2021, I opened up Treehouse which is a, a club in New Orleans you've been to. Yeah. Um, that was three years after I opened up Morrow's. 2022, I opened up Monday. And I started to see the, um, I, I started to like, you know, love it more and more because I love dealing with people, being yeah. in the hospitality industry. I love with connecting that with spot, people. Because soon as, like, the first time I came to Treehouse, 
soon as uh, you know you hit the street to go to the club, first shit I see is the is the seventy five vert. Yeah. And I see all the cars and shit. I'm like, oh, okay, there's some players. So they got the old schools laid out. Yeah, I don't man. know if that was just like that night, but that it night. just so w happened. W when was the first time you came? Um, I had been a time before with Chad when we went for a show, I think. And then we came that one night after our show with, mm -hmm. and then like, all those people were there. And uh, when Nas was there that night, okay, yeah, for so asking. I had I've been twice. Okay, the first time was when only we just, you only been in New Orleans twice in your life. No, I'm saying I've been oh, to the spot. Twice. Okay, yeah. yeah, I've been in New Orleans probably forever, like a thousand times probably. Yeah. I'm from Mississippi, so it ain't shit to just jump. Yeah, in that's the car right. You from the country? Ride down, yeah. Oh, yeah, you from the country for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mississippi country, not that Louisiana country. Y'all got no, no, no y'all country different. Like y'all shit even, different. Somebody asked me if I wanted to open up a spot, could they have some spots available in Mississippi? I'm like, are you serious? Like I wouldn't even. What, I you, ain't what you saying, man? <laughs> <that? laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't. I you wouldn't. Saw even, that? Ain't, uh, no, ain't nobody trying to be in Mississippi. Man, you got a spot in Louisiana. Louisiana. New Orleans. New Orleans is no like listen. See, this is what the white man want, bro. New Orleans. New Orleans is. Listen, no, you're not about to sit here and try New to convince New Orleans is a I'm small spot, Louisiana. but we got a lot, like, because of our history, our culture, you know, musically, what Wayne, Birdman, Master P, and everybody has, you know, they set the tone for how people view New Orleans. Outside of New Orleans and Baton Rouge, all the rest of this shit is pretty much Mississippi. And that's cool. I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> I ain't tripping about every, everywhere else, but, you know, shit, Baton Rouge country too, but they got, you know, LSU. and What is New some, Orleans? What you mean, like, to me, what is New Orleans? No, I mean, that shit ain't country. New Orleans is country. I mean, okay. we in the south, we in the bottom just, of the map. We got, we got the check. Gulf of Mexico behind us, like, beneath us. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we from, I'm from the country. But it, I think, you know, being from New Orleans is like, we one of the country places that got a lot of culture. Hell yeah. That just mean there's a lot of niggas down there, Larry. You know, you can't name too many country <laughs> places that, what y'all got, David Banner that came from Mississippi? Damn! Like, like, you nigga and me, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> me and, and some other motherfuckers, Bubba, Larry. Who are Bubba's fucking Mississippi? But that's cool and all, but like, man, y'all ain't got no culture. Y'all no killed all <laughs> y'all legends, what the fuck? We killed all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. If you nigga didn't that's move, cool. he had to live. Yeah, nigga had to move for sure. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> nah, that's cool. I, I fuck with both places, all right? I need my job. Man, ain't nobody that's crazy. The only niggas from the South be like, nigga, you country too! <laughs> nah, it's the same shit, yeah, though. Nah, Mississippi nah. and Louisiana. We all country. We country cousins, bro. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? At least it ain't Alabama. Right. That's all the same shit. Mississippi, Alabama, same thing. the thing. same shit. Nah, it ain't. <laughs> it, you would have you to be it. from Mississippi or Alabama to know we always gone. Go back That's and like forth in New Alabama. Orleans. You tell somebody they from Louisiana. Yeah, somebody be like Louisiana. They be like, oh, I'm from New Orleans. Like, like you from you Alexandria. Know, Alexandria. <laughs> and, then, and if you if somebody from you know outside New Orleans is like people from New Orleans, like, nah, I'm from New Orleans. They think it's a whole separate place in Louisiana. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Only in the South, bro. But we wouldn't let nobody who not from the South say this type of shit. Right. I mean, shit up north too, cause I mean, East Coast shit. You tell somebody. They repping Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and all that stuff. They repping that shit hard. You, you can't been, touch somebody. You threw some events out the country yet? No, 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 not out the country. What you waiting on? Man, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it's time, Larry. At Man. least some spring break I mean, shit. No, no, don't, don't get it twisted. I thought about it and was trying to put some stuff together in the Bahamas and stuff, but. No, that's that's too typical, Larry. You be. I mean, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do some shit in Russia, my nigga. Russia. What North the fuck? Korea, my nigga. You on a bigger level, yeah, there. You, you, got, you got family over there, though. In oh, Korea? I haven't met him. Let's do some oh, shit yeah. in Korea, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to Korea for the first time next year with my family, yeah. What part? Uh, Seoul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to do some shit over there, Larry. Why now, you link up with all your cousins and shit? <laughs> you Hopefully I can find them. And my grandmother, oh, they know. My grandmother haven't talked to her family in 20 years. That yeah. ain't that long. That's 03. <laughs> yeah, she ain't talking about around 03 for real. Like, it's been a long time, so. Now that is a little bit. We're going to take a trip out there next year and um, try to, you know, she's going to look to reconnect with her family. And That's hard. We'll take out the. Get out there, Larry. Yeah, we going next year, 100%. Yeah. Big balding ass Larry. What can, man, can they find you on social media or you one of them rich niggas don't be on there? Nah, not be on social media. I mean, shit, social media has been a tool that helped me. Um... Bro, let's go to Larry Pay. You know some hoes. <laughs> See, I can't fool with y'all, man. Yes, yeah, the fuck you can, bro. You... Say, <laughs> see, we gotta I wait till the camera go out and get one of the real oh, stories. Oh, nah, you want the cameras go out, man. Still, <laughs> look, 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 look,
<laughs> Nicki Larry Minaj. Chilling, man. Larry, I know, man. Larry, Larry, Larry ain't see nothing. Larry ain't do nothing. Larry ain't see. You must have to get permission to get on here. Nah, man. I just, I be chilling. I don't, I be chilling. I, I work. Be ch- Larry I got a girl, I too. Working, I be chilling, too. Yeah. I ain't talking about shit. <laughs> just kicking the willy bobo, Larry. We just, you know, just not niggas be talking, Larry. We ain't on nothing. Yeah. Nah, nah I just be chilling, though, man. There ain't really too much to do out there. All right. <laughs> So what's next, bro? You you coming? You definitely coming to Atlanta to, to jump some shit. Yeah, not one thousand percent. Like so, my whole um, right now, uh, my hospitality group is growing. Uh, I have Morrow Hospitality. I have I have over three hundred employees. I have now what's five the eighty five South collab that we doing? Shit, you tell me, man. Let's put it together. All right, we can do something, man. Put a kitchen in this motherfucker. Do do Clubs to run. Yeah, Clubs to run. Uh, he told me I was gonna get into that. That I was gonna get into the restaurant industry. Yeah, so just let me know. Um, but yeah, so uh, expanding my hosp- hospitality portfolio, that's like my main, uh, my main thing, because, you know, eventually one day, well, I will one day be at the table discussing, you know, numbers, you know, if I want to sell it or not, you know? Yeah, and, and, you and that's sell the, it. Yeah, now, I, I, won't, I mean, I just want the feeling. Yeah. I just want to know what it feels like. At least something to yeah. turn down. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah. I want the feeling just to say I've done it, you know, I think. Um, but, you know, like you said, legacy, man, just building that legacy. Uh, like I tell my mom, um, you know, I want to create something, you know, for our family to stand on. You know, like me being the only man, um, I'm just, I'm just really just out there to really create this legacy and just really just I want people to know that we was here. You know, that we exactly. existed. You know, leave, uh, leave a great, um, give my daughter a great start. Uh, my nephew, my, um, my niece. You know, just my family. So that's uh, that's, that's really one of the family first yeah man that's that's one of the things for me man i really won't be able to leave that legacy behind but not just legacy i won't be able to leave some bread behind too and just give my family a great start and um you know do it like the, never mind, i ain't gonna say that but just just give them a great start <laughs> hey, i heard that tell me your social media man so uh social media larry <laughs> underscore morrow m-o-r-r-o-w on all platforms so larry underscore morrow or you could google me one or the other <laughs> google larry <laughs> morrow <laughs> It's gonna be a white man selling houses in Wisconsin. You wanna nah, buy a really house? Got, all they really Larry. got a white man named Larry Morrow. Man, I've been trying to buy the site. He got LarryMorrow.com. What's on? I it? can't get it. I don't know. Just uh, he's an author or something. Uh, <laughs> he's an author or something. Sell shovels. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> Larry, man, this is your first time stopping through here, but don't let it be the last. Nah, man, I'm glad I mean, I've been able to uh, come up here and do this, man, because uh, I've been watching y'all for a long time. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you need to lead the people with? Anything that's coming up? You got to get my up? boy's merch, too, now. Huh? His merch. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a good, you know what I mean? Definitely need that. We got you, man. Okay, you okay, okay. Let's see what they Got the hat, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You got the pullover, for Little sure. Little day man, party man, listen, type I, shit. I cannot fit in no meeting. You can't. I cannot fit in no Well, I mean, we, we got you, Larry. Hey, man. Nah, for sure. Nah, I appreciate it. But uh, I told you the pictures we had of you was old. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Fuck Larry Sides, please. Mm-hmm. We got you, bro. We got everything. But uh, next, um, I want to say, man, just growing, man. I really don't have, like, not one of those people that plan too far ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just figure it out. You know, like, my life, you know, I be figuring it out. Like, I don't even know, like, like I book my flights last minute. I do everything last minute because it's just, like, I just go with money. Yeah, but... <laughs> At the end of the day, I, I do that. things that feel good. Like, like if, if I decide I don't want to hop on a flight, I'm just not going to hop on it. Uh, if I decide, you know, I want to go to X, Y, and Z tomorrow, you know, like I just came from Europe for two weeks and I booked that like two weeks before. Listen um, to a nigga older than you, Larry. No, no, no. It cost me more money. I'm, but, saying, I'm saying, though. No, what the I'm saying, do? How was Europe? What happened over there? See, I just brought my family, my daughter, yeah. my girl. Yeah, so. Don't waste it. Yeah, and not, but it's not, it's not, for me, it's not really like, I get it, because I do waste a lot of money being last minute, but it's like, if, like, I do things that, that feel great to me. If I feel like I don't want to do something, then I'm just going to waste the money. Like, some flights aren't refundable. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can book a Delta, not, no. non-refundable or refundable, whatever. But, um, you know, it's just like, I like to do things that feel good. So when it comes to, to like, planning far out, it's like every day is new experiences, new information, just new situations, new tables I'm at. So, um, but pri- primarily it's like, you know, focusing on a hospitality company, uh, expanding my portfolio, of course, buying real estate, got some new pieces I'm buying. Um, um, and you know, just, just building, man, taking care of my family. That's it. That's hard. It's real bro. simple, man. Well, you, I wish Not you much love, love and success you, you, and keep you, doing you. your thing, bro. I appreciate it's, y'all, man. It's just cool to see a young nigga come through the game right. and, and really just put his foot down and leave, leave that imprint, man. Right. What's next for y'all? Shit, we doing a movie next. That's what's up. 
We're doing a movie. We, we're working on some ideas right now, kicking a script back and forth, um, take over. Yeah. Got a few ventures that's gonna be going mm -hmm. on with some some Amazons and mm -hmm. some, and you know, some few few names in the entertainment yeah. industry. But we're working on some projects and some things for our app and right. our production company and just taking this shit to a whole nother level. Right. Yeah, it's crazy when I walked in, mm -hmm. I had no idea it was like a production studio. So um, seeing that, like you never know what goes on behind the scenes. So seeing that, I'm like, damn, yeah. I get it. Cause you know, like looking at the bigger picture, I see I got different sets and different things. Y'all shooting different podcasts yeah. and shit. We so. just get on here and say wild shit to keep yeah. them distracted. Yeah. Right. But nah, nah, y'all working though. I was like, you know, I, I didn't expect this. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but pulling up here was like, damn, I know what I need to do. Cause you know, I'm, I'm working on a, um, a off, office just to kind of house everything out of, you know, yeah. just run everything out of. So it kind of gave me some great ideas to just like, you know, create that environment that everybody can just really just get to work in, you know what I mean? That's good. So, nah. That's what we're looking forward to when you expand your empire to Atlanta, man. We would definitely it's coming soon, I promise you. As soon as I get that location, it's over. We would definitely love to work with you on something, and throw yeah. a dope ass event, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you know, make, you know, do something, uh, do some things that we can continue to do, right. you know, some some quarterly events or something yeah. like that. We throw a dope ass party, cold ass dinner, and yeah. win a ball, or, Ghetto prom, something. See, whatever, but shit, let's do it. Homecoming, whatever. Homecoming. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, Black History Month. Yeah. All types of they shit. They got to come down to New Orleans for Mardi Gras or something, man. Most definitely. So y'all good time. I ain't down. never been to a Mardi Gras, man. Come on. For real? I want to make a baby. I know I No, don't do it. You say what? I want to make a baby. He going to make a baby. He like to make kids to commemorate <laughs> for fun. shit. How many kids you got? It sound like you got like 20 kids. No, no, nah, nah, it ain't that man. much shit to celebrate. Six. Six? Hold it down. So it ain't that many? Yeah. That's a lot. Not I mean, how many you got? One. Okay. Well, you, <laughs> you, you, you was my six was a lot. <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I just needed better friends back there. <laughs> I needed better friends back yeah, there. Yeah, he did. I mean, he getting his life on track now. He's good. I told you he's a good dude. But yeah, so if you fuck with him, six people pulling up. <laughs> <laughs> party of seven. At least, man. <laughs> party Larry, of seven. This is only part one, bro. We're gonna come. We're gonna bring you back and get the whole life story. Okay. And all of that and the highlights. Well, money back, anything you need to leave me with? I know y'all got a tour coming up. Yeah, uh Family Business Tour. We don't even gotta say where it is. It's, it's, Family they Business gotta find tour, it Nat everywhere. Green, Clayton English, myself, pull up, you know what I'm saying? 85 South, three headed monster. Most still definitely. one, still rock. Clax. Right. Bando, bando, bando. He don't talk that much. No, he don't. He don't. <laughs> He just played the play the played music. them vibes. He played them vibes. Hell yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm Carlos Miller. I was and I still am. That's <laughs> Moneybag Mafia. And that's my boy Larry Morrow. And we out of here. We'll see you later. 85 South Show, the coldest podcast. Peace, Thank you for sharing the platform.